All right, today we got back and core, pure back. So I'm not doing any pull sessions, I'm not touching my arms, I'm not touching biceps. I'm just purely gonna be doing some heavy rowing. Uh, I'm gonna be doing some pull-ups, a bunch of different stuff. I think we're just gonna focus, actually, screw that. We're not gonna focus on upper back thickness or lats, which is your width. Instead, we're just gonna do a complete back day, so I'm gonna hit a good amount of both. Woke up at 215.3 pounds on the bulk, something around there. So we're definitely getting up there. Um, I think my whole game plan with this bulk is I'm gonna do one of two things. So I've been having a lot of visions or I've just been imagining myself sitting around like 230 pounds morning weight fasted. And I figured it would be something really cool if I made a transition to, uh, to show off how I'm able to give success to my weight loss clients if I can make the same tradition. So I'm not gonna necessarily just get fat as hell, but I do wanna get like pretty up there. This is one route that I'm thinking about. I might go really up there and then try to lose 15 pounds in like two months just to show that weight loss is simple. Not easy, but simple. And if you use my programming, then it's, it's a lot easier to do so. So that's one of the things that I'm thinking about doing or the other route, which I most likely will do, will be I'm going to probably bulk till I'm around 217, 218, hit a maintenance phase for around a month, and then maybe do either a mini cut or just maintain for longer, depending on how lean I am. That's the best way to go about lean bulking because you don't actually build any muscle on a cut unless you are significantly overweight, have a high body fat percentage, or yeah, those are really the only two. Uh, two ways, or if you're a beginner. If you're a beginner weightlifter and you're slightly overweight, then you can build muscle while losing fat or an intermediate level lifter. But if you're advanced, that's pretty much off the table. So I'm gonna be doing either one of those two things and I will let y'all know what I'm thinking about. In the comments on my last YouTube video, I had somebody ask me, when are you gonna do the cut? When is the mini cut gonna come through? When are you gonna look good for summer? Like, bro, I know I don't look good. I don't need to hear that. But I'm probably not gonna be cutting through summer or for a little while just because I want to fix my health up and I want to put on a lot of muscle and I know most people like to do their cuts through the summer they like to look really good but instead I feel like if I bulk through the summer and then cut after the summer then I'll be looking good while everybody else isn't looking as good and then you know I can just be the outlier so I don't know also my cut was for a long period of time and this lean bulk has been really really slow for me I took a lot slower approach than usual um, so yeah, that's kind of my thoughts. Anyways, geez, I have been stopped at this light forever. Okay, here we go. Um, this is gonna be another pretty raw workout, so I'm not gonna put too much editing into this. Just gonna show you what I do, give you my tips, and hopefully I'll enjoy. So I will see y'all in the gym. All right, we're gonna start this back day off with pull-ups. I've been recently loving weighted pull-ups. I used to just do them kind of AMRAP with body weight, but now that I'm bulking, getting heavy, it's kind of hard to do anywhere upwards of 10 reps of pull-ups. So I choose to do them weighted. I'm focusing on progressive overloading. So last time I did pull-ups, I got 25 pounds for around six or seven reps. So this time I'm going for 30 for hopefully that same rep range. That's how you get stronger. That's how you know you're building muscle. And uh, if we're able to hit it, we grew, which is the goal. If you don't have a weight belt to carry the weight, you could always just Put your foot underneath the dumbbell and then put the other one on top, cross them over, and it holds it pretty well. pretty solid I mean I hit my rep range um, you can see I'm trying to pull as fast as I can the concentric is super important to go really fast with this and then the eccentric you want to take a little bit more time in it because it's really gonna build up that time under tension and as we know tension is how you build muscle if you manipulate mechanical if you manipulate mechanical tension better than other people you're gonna get bigger muscles than other people bro science the nice thing about starting with pull-ups is you get a pump pretty quickly so now I can take this women's small hoodie off Wow, who would have guessed? The whole fit squid hoss. Cold little dirt. Ah. Ah. 
Okay, so I just hit failure. I'm actually gonna do the pass failure technique on my second and third set. This is what it's gonna look like. So, holy shit. Jump up reps, so go complete a failure, pull for as long as you can on that failure rep. After you hit failure, drop the weight. Jump up to the bar. You're still pulling yourself up, like you're using your back muscles, but you're also just jumping up to get your eyes at the bar level. And then all you're doing is focusing on lowering yourself as slowly as possible. You should be able to get around three to six reps, depending on your conditioning level. If you're able to get more than six reps for these, then you're either an endurance athlete, you're way too light, or you didn't actually go to failure. So make sure that you're not in that category. Easiest one to fix is being too light. Pick up the damn fork, go get some Chick-fil-A. I don't usually go that heavy on this, so we're just gonna go right into my first working set, three plates and a 10. I have absolutely no clue what I'm gonna get for reps here. We're just gonna really focus on the stretch and going nice and slow on the eccentric, really letting that tension build up. I got a little bit of David Goggins in my ear, so I'm fired up right now. Listen to somebody scream and tell you you're a bitch, and it usually makes it push a little bit harder. Get ready for this ASMR. This is a vulnerable position. Next exercise. I had somebody the other day comment on one of my posts, what is one of your, what is your biggest fear? And first of all, this was super out of the blue because I think it was just on like a posing video. But um, I actually had a very long winded explanation to this, but the explanation I get, gave was just not being the best version of myself, which I feel like is a pretty rational fear that a lot of people have, but people don't really act upon. And the best analogy that I could give for this, and you don't have to be particularly a religious person, I'm not that religious, but this analogy is kind of about religion. So if, whether you believe in God or not, just for the sake of the analogy, you believe in God. I think the worst fear could have been, you know, everybody waiting in line to get into heaven and God's evaluating everybody one by one by one. Everybody is taking a step forward as God lets you know what you did, what you accomplished, and whether you get let in or not. And then it's finally after all those people in front of you go, it's your turn. And you go up to God and God looks at you. He looks down at his clipboard and he says, you were a four time Olympic gold medalist. You were a excellent father to your kids. You were an excellent husband. You inspired millions through social media. You were a two time classic physique champion. All of this yada, 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 200, if you're really into lifting weights just like myself, then maybe he'll read, wow, you died. 250 pounds of pure lean muscle, amazing. And then he looks up and notices you, in which you are none of those things. He looks down at you and he goes, what happened? And then you look at him and go, what do you mean? This is me, I am me, you must have the wrong clipboard, you must have the wrong person. And then God looks at you and says, no, that's who you were supposed to be. Remember, I'm not a religious person, but this, uh, this kind of hit me pretty hard and I was thinking about this for a while and I think that genuinely would be the scariest thing ever because you aren't guaranteed to ever become that person. You aren't ever guaranteed to win in life. You are never guaranteed to become the best version of yourself. But damn it, you should try. And a lot of people don't try. And the only thing that actually is guaranteed is that if you don't try, you will 100% never be that person. But if you try, you at least have the chance. And so I don't necessarily know if I'm gonna be any of those things. There's obviously a couple of them that I really wanna be, but one of the things that I wanna be the most would be if I've written on that clipboard would be you had hundreds of millions of followers of people that lost weight or built muscle or changed their physiques or changed their mentality or got inspired by you. And if I wasn't able to accomplish that and he read that off to me, I, I don't know how I'd be able to live with myself. Even if he let me in, I probably would be like, I don't deserve it. So the most important thing is trying and that's what I'm trying to get at. So if you, if that isn't your biggest fear in life, hopefully it is now, because that sure as hell is mine. Oh, by the way, we're doing, um, 
lat pull down single arm. These are awesome. The reason why I like doing this is because it lets you get a really big stretch in your lat. And whenever you do a single arm movement, it's a lot easier to completely go to failure with your strength progression. When you do uh, movements where you're using both your arms, a lot of the times you'll overcompensate with your dominant hand or just unequally distribute the weight. So although single arm movements have a little bit more fatigue to them because you have to do one set complete to failure and then do another set complete to failure just to do one full set on both sides, uh, I still think that the strength progression and the intensity output is worth it. So let's do this. The most important part of this, watch my lat, it's gonna be the stretch that you get when you come forward on the eccentric. So really take your time with these. And also go heavy, don't be a puss. <sighs> So see with these, you really let yourself come forward as much as possible to get that full stretch. You really elongate that lat and uh, take a couple seconds in between switching arms because these are pretty brutal. Oh, and then I'm sure you saw it, but use your other hand to get like one or two additional reps past failure because you're gonna hit a wall at a certain range of motion. You're not gonna be able to pull it all the way down. That's when you just take your other hand, get that rest of the range of motion, and then do the eccentric by yourself. If you have wrist wraps, I highly recommend. I don't because I'm a man. No, I'm just kidding. But um, highly recommend, especially for this exercise or any lap pull down movement. Your forearms are usually going to be a pretty big limiting factor, and you use wrist wraps, no more limiting factor. Fourth exercise, we're going to be doing a bent over Smith machine row. So. This is gonna be a little bit of a mix of like old bodybuilder style movement with a little bit of newer science-based hypertrophy, whatever you wanna call it. Um, we're gonna focus on keeping constant tension on and the Smith machine is gonna be the science-based part and you're gonna see that the momentum I use during my reps is gonna be the old head bodybuilding style. So I'm not gonna go super slow and controlled like I do for almost all my movements. Instead, I'm gonna kind of rep these out just because I feel like it keeps constant tension on my back a lot better than when I go slow. Sometimes when I go slow, I feel like I switch the emphasis over from my back onto my arms a lot and I'd rather just keep it on my back the whole time. So if I speed up the tempo and I feel better contraction, feel a little bit more tension, then uh, that's what I'm gonna do. So rep range is gonna look a little bit lighter, or sorry, it's gonna be a little bit wider it's gonna be higher, excuse me. You're gonna be a little bit fatigued if you did the first three exercises properly and actually went to failure, so that means we're gonna to have to do between eight and 12 reps here with a little bit of a lighter weight. Two or three sets, I haven't decided yet, but we're not gonna do any drop sets, any BS. So, yeah, I'll show you what that looks like. So if you're somebody who struggles with a little bit of back pain, just like myself, then what you wanna do is squeeze your glutes as hard as possible. I mean, your glutes should be literally like rock solid. Solid. Rock salad. Sounds like a sandwich that nobody would wanna eat. That was so stupid. That was so stupid, why did I say that? Okay, squeeze your glutes, it takes the tension off your lower back. I'm in a vulnerable position right now. I'm gonna switch that up. And uh, hopefully I'm in view. Um, we're just gonna do two here. I'm actually gonna do a lot of exercises because I really like back, so. I love back day. This is gonna completely finish off our lats, so we're gonna keep our form pretty strict. The reason I'm using this instead of a cable lat pull down is because I don't think I'm able to go that heavy now that I'm pretty tired. This is exercise number five, so pretty far into the workout. And uh, I'd rather just have as much controlled variables as possible. So when you do a cable lat pull down, there's no machine that's keeping your stability super strict. So sometimes you'll put the tension onto your forearms and if you don't have wrist wraps, then that could be kind of detrimental to trying to take your back completely to failure. So a machine like this is really good for your lower lats just to completely hammer them out. 
I think I'm uh, sounding like a broken record, but we're gonna do another two sets here and then uh, probably move on to core and then call it. We'll see about posing, I don't know, I'm feeling kind of chunky. Make sure this is really tight. Don't want your feet coming up. I have a six, five inch wingspan, so I'm not gonna get too much of a stretch here. Okay, that was really light. Okay, so first set's gonna be strength focused. Second set, I'm gonna hit a drop set. Honestly, I thought it was gonna be a little bit more angled straight up and down. This is a little bit more of like a pendulum movement. So you're coming at an angle when you pull instead of just strict up and down. So it's not just gonna be straight lower lats. It's gonna get a, a little bit of your mid to upper lats as well. Um, still overall an amazing movement. And then, yeah. We'll see what we do next. Six fucking exercises. Two sets, eight to 12 reps. I prefer hitting the lower end of that rep range. And then uh, rep these bad boys out. This might be a little light, we'll see. If your gym doesn't have this machine, a cable lap pullover works just as well. The biggest thing with this is just make sure that you're, oh, I realize this is probably really loud. Um, just make sure that you're flexing, like manually stretching your lats while you do this. So it's almost like I'm trying to hit a lat spread right now. It helps me with the mind muscle connection. Oh, yeah, that's too light. Holy shit, there's a seat belt here. No way. I mean, I don't know why you'd ever use it, but now I feel like I got to. Strapped in. Practice safe sets, everybody. Sets. And the other thing, too. All right. Mm. Ah. 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 Oh. Once I can't get the full range of motion anymore, I like to speed up my reps for the parcels just to get a little bit more stimulus because I find that without momentum, these are very hard to do at the end. Other than that, oh, I almost want to do four sets here because I got core next. Oh, moving on to abs. I'm convinced that this is the single greatest exercise to not only grow your abdominals, but to grow your discipline. I hate this exercise more than I hate taking a rest day. I hate this exercise more than I hate being capped as a natural lifter. I hate this exercise more than getting an absolute shithead for a random duo in Clash Royale. So you could tell that this is gonna be horrible. Basically, I forget the actual name of this exercise and I honestly don't know where I learned it from. So that's not helpful, but what you're gonna do is hold on to the top of this right here. You're gonna bring your legs up and down. Once you bring them up, you're gonna scoot your butt off the bench and try to slowly lower your legs as far as possible while keeping your butt off the bench. Now, you're only gonna be able to do these for a couple reps if you do them properly and slow and controlled. And then once you get to the bottom, you're probably gonna have to put your butt back on the bench, but try to keep it up for as long as possible. And then bring your legs back up, bring your core up off the bench, your butt up off the bench and lower again slowly. So the whole reason that you wanna bring your butt up is not only does it make the exercise more difficult, difficult, but it's also going to engage your lower abdominals a lot more. Sometimes if you don't bring your butt off the bench, you don't get that full stretch and contraction in your abs and instead you're gonna be working your hip flexors a lot. So just make sure you're bringing your butt up. I'm only doing two sets here. They're gonna be super intense. And then I'm gonna do another exercise for only two sets, four sets total. That's all you need to hit abs. And if you do it correctly, you'll get a six pack. Okay, oh. that's one set, 
Training core is just like any other muscle groups. You need to take the appropriate amount of rest time so you can keep up the same amount of intensity. So I do this superset, I rest like three minutes, and then I do it again. All you have to do is choose two movements. You have to make sure that those movements are gonna work your full core and give it that full stretch that it's looking for because your abs are just like any other muscle group, so they need to be fully stretched, fully contracted, and have to have a lot of tension to grow. So you wanna choose exercises like the one before, and uh, the only other thing that's super important is that you choose to make one of the movements a weighted movement. That way you can kind of work on progressive overloading. So this is gonna be my second movement. What I'm gonna do here is two sets, just like I did two sets to the other one. And instead of doing a superset, I'm gonna do a drop set, both sets. So just a ton of intensity here and uh, don't overcomplicate it. And I better not see you holding a fucking plank. Grown man holding a plank. Come on, you're better than that. Okay, wait, that might be too heavy. Let's uh, adjust this. Usually I do this first, so. Props <laughs> 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 that. Oh. This shit will send you to the gulag. Take both sets to failure, or take the initial set to failure and the drop set to failure. You'll know you hit failure because you'll fucking fail. Um, don't be a wimp and cut it out easy, like with a rep in the tank. You need that failure rep. We'll see where we go. We might end up in the posing room, we might end up on a hot girl walk, or we might end up in the whip. We'll see. Either way, I'm doing a hot girl walk. I just don't know if I'm gonna record it. Whew. All right, so for everybody that made it to this part of the video, I really appreciate y'all. Um, the pump is honestly kind of mid. I mean, I'm bulking, so not that much definition left. It's got a little something that I'm working with, but not that much. If you could do me a huge favor and like the video, it helps promote my channel with algorithm, helps me get more views, and it, actually it's a lot more important than I thought it was. Is this in your way? But yeah, I'll make sure to throw the entire workout up on the screen. Sorry, is mine your way too? All right. I'll make sure to throw the entire work up on the screen so you can follow with the exercises, sets, reps, all of that. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed. And uh, yeah, drop a like. So anyways, I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's see what we're working with. <laughs>